In this video, I wanted to share with you a really good defense for uh, tight slots in Madden 22. So if you've played any of Madden 22, if you've played anybody that's really good, they're probably going to be running um, some bunch and bunch into the tight slots formation. So today I wanted to give you a defense that is really, really effective uh, for the tight slots offense and some of the core primary things that they're going to be trying to do uh, within this formation. Now, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. It is completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you uh, to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies that we release every single day here on the channel. Uh, so again, it's completely free. Be sure to hit that sub button down below. And then also while we're uh, talking about some stuff like that, I just wanted to share with you that this defense that I'm talking about is kind of a, honestly, it's a culmination of a lot of different concepts that I've been working on this year defensively. This has by far been the hardest year for defense that I could personally remember. And I've been playing Madden since Madden uh, 2002. And uh, again, this is just by far the worst defense of Madden ever. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like it's actually made me a significantly better defensive player over the long run. And so we put, uh, we've been putting a ton of work all year long into our Patreon membership where we've been uh, adding new offensive and defensive guides. As it sits right now, I've got over 20 offensive and defensive ebooks in the membership, and you can get all of those ebooks. In addition to that, we're also going to give you all kinds of different updates to those ebooks as well as future updates um, while your membership is active. If you want to sign up for that, there's a link in the description below. It's only 10 bucks to be a Patreon member. And again, you get access to all kinds of stuff. So the exact defense I'm gonna be talking about today is in there. Um, and there's actually a kind of a fully fleshed out defensive ebook uh, in there as well with the 335 wide or the 46 playbook, uh, which I would, I, I just keep coming back to it. I feel like, um, yeah, there's some other things you can do, but by and large, because the 335 wide allows you to adjust and you, you literally have to adjust this year defensively, you can't just come out and palms or nine and, and expect to just bag everybody for playing a good player. You got to be able to have some adjustments and that's what this defense is going to allow you to be able to do. So if you want to get the ebook links in the description, let's talk about tight and defending this incredible offensive set. So uh, what we want to do on defense, make sure that this the, these two primary things are in your audibles. You want to have Mike Blitz zero and cover four show two. Mike Blitz zero, we're going to use that in, a, in certain situations where they might go into what's called the rule of four, and I'll explain that in just a second. Um, but it's basically a check that we're going to do if they put us in a situation where we can't run match. I would love to be able to run match 100% of the time if possible because it is by far the best coverage, the safest coverage, and puts your defenders in the best position to make plays. Now, again, this is a modified match. This cover four show two is going to play like cover four quarters. Um, and in tight, I'm going to explain how it's going to work. So let's just get out on the field and talk through this. So if you take a look at the at the formation as it sits right now, I've talked about this before on the channel, but basically what you're going to get on the left side of the field is a box check to the left side. Why are you getting a box check to the left side? You're getting a box check to the left side because there's three receiving threats. So for lack of better explanation, the left side is going to defend it's essentially as if they have bunch to the left. That's basically how the defense is going to play. Um, however, the, so imagine if the tight end was a running back and the running back was a tight end. That would be bunch, right? That's basically how it's going to play. Okay? So um, from a defensive perspective, and, and I'll just kind of explain kind of the primary way that I know that, and then we'll get into some stuff here. So if you watch here, I'm going to run a streak, a... I'm going to run a streak to the outside receiver and a corner route to the inside receiver on both sides of the field. And then we're just going to run a running back on a flat. And I want you to watch. You'll see it defends it differently on the left than it does on the right. So I'll just let it run here. And then I'll throw the tight end. And I want you to notice and replay how this plays differently. And then we're going to get into uh, how we can kind of make some adjustments and, and hang with this. So uh, what you're going to see on this left side is this is going to defend it exactly how we want. 
this outside corner on the left side of the screen is going to guard any corner route that comes his way. That's the box check. So you see how they swap off. And number two, Jalen Mills defends this corner because he has leverage on him. Okay, and then you see here the quarter flat. This is why I hate quarter flats. Um, he plays absolutely stupid, which is frustrating as all get out, and does not guard the flat. He literally guards nobody. Absolutely hate quarter flats this year. Um, they, they were much better last year. Okay, so now come over here. So this guy is the guy on the corner. Watch who guards him. You're going to see that number 20. Whoops, let me see here. The safety. Okay, so number 21, Adrian Phillips. The inside guy gets out leveraged and ran to the corner. That is the biggest problem with quarters against tight. You don't get a box check on both sides of the formation. This is why a formation like, and I don't know if I have it in this playbook. I think I actually do have it in the play in the playbook here. That's why a formation like. Let me, let me back out of here and see if I can find the specific corner route and show you why it's a problem. Um, this is the uh, – Mills runs this offense from Elite Madden. Um, this is his – this is his – yeah, right here, drive corner, okay? So what you're going to see is, like if I was Mills, I would have a really, really good player here that can run a corner, a good corner route. And uh, what you'll notice with this – and this is a deeper corner, but this will obliterate match because the outside quarter – on that side doesn't guard it why doesn't he guard it the reason he doesn't guard it is because the running back is on the other side of the field so what you're gonna see is this quarter will get out leveraged to the left side and I'll show it real quick so what you'll see here is the safety is gonna be in coverage on Godwin and he's gonna get absolutely obliterated to the corner as you see they take a false step and this literally this route alone is one of the reasons why people run tight against match because it literally I mean, it just kills it. It, it. it just kills it. And what you'll notice here is if I flip my play and I run the same thing on the right, you're going to see the same thing happen on the right, even though the pro the difference being that Gronk doesn't have a, a, a slot o -matic. But, I mean, it's it's basically the same the same principle um, of what's going on. And this is, this is why, you know, again, if you're a good match, if you're a good Madden player and you're running tight, this, this, this corner route right here is – you know, people don't realize, but because of the fact that he has a route ability and because it's such a deep corner and because the running back's on the other side. So I'm going to prove that by making one little adjustment to this concept. All I'm going to do is we're still going to run match. Now, he still might get open because of his route ability, but we're just going to put the running back on this side of the formation. I want you to watch how the defense plays. And what you'll see now is that corner route gets double teamed. And I'll show it again real quick, and then we'll, we'll talk about tights. We'll go back to tight slots. This is, this is the box check, and this is what you expect. Like, if you're running match, this is what you expect to happen on both sides. It's not what happens on both sides. It's just not. Flat out, it's just not what happens on both sides. So they're going to move this running back to this side, and what you'll see now is this plays really, really well. As you can see, that outside quarter gets out there and makes the play. Okay? So that, that's the core um, concept of how the defense functions against this formation, against tight. Okay, Based off where the running back's at, that's where the corner is going to be guarded. The other side, the corner is not going to be guarded. Kind of a key thing for you mentally to understand if you're going to be able to play good defense against this formation. Okay, So now let's go back to uh, tight slots and talk about another concept that you get a lot. Or talk about, so so basically, if you take a look at the defense, um, it, it, essentially, we're getting a box check to the left, and on the right side, we might as well take this defender and man him up on the tight end. Because, there's, because if you don't man him up on the tight end, then the problem becomes that this guy is going to get out leveraged all day long. Okay, so just by manning him up on the tight end, we're automatically going to get some help um, in terms of how this is going to cover. Now, let's talk about this. This um, let's talk about this play right here, and let's say they block the tight end to run their little flood play or their bomb. I want to show you what that that if you man him up, what happens. So I manned up that safety. So watch how he plays now. Now look what he does. 
Now he can help on that double team. And as you can see here, this bomb is not open against this coverage. It really isn't. Obviously, he caught it. Classic Madden 22 this year. But but it's really not open. Um, you know, obviously, you can still th – you know, we all know in Madden 22, you can throw stuff that's not open, right? But, uh, but anyways. Okay, so the key thing here is that by taking this defender – and just simply manning him up, it's going to help your defense. If you take nothing away from this defense, the video, if you're playing tight, man up the number two receiver on the weak side of the passing strength. What I mean by that is the, the more receivers are what's considered the passing strength. So in this scenario, the three wide receivers to the left, that's where the passing strength is. So the backside safety, I'm manning him up on the number two, and you're going to instantly get better on defense. Instantly get better on defense. If you do that and you're noticing that another concept or another thing that people like to do um, from tight most of the time is they block their tight end. So they're going to probably try to get a little rollout going on here and they're going to try to maybe hit a crosser. Um, you know, this is more I'm thinking right now of post wheel drag um, or uh, yeah, yeah, post wheel drag. So you might get something like this scenario where you have that crosser, maybe you have a running back in route, and then maybe you have a hitch. Let's just say. Very good concept. The crosser is imitating like a deep post, obviously. Um, why do they like this formation? Because those post routes get over the top of 30 yard clouds. So now I want you to watch this concept and take a look at how the coverage plays. You're gonna see that this coverage doesn't play terribly against this, and you see that the match Cut crosses the field with him very well. Now, how can we make the coverage better? Well, the best way to make this coverage better is to understand who the problem receivers are and the scenarios in which we need to be able to play good coverage on them. Uh, and I'm going to show you one other principle or one other kind of money, or actually two other um, two other concepts, and then we'll and then we'll talk about the, the completion of the defense. So the third one, or the, the next one is mesh spot, which is basically the inverse of this. And so what we'll do is we'll block the tight end, we'll streak uh, square, and then, you know, again, can vary what they're going to do with these other two guys. Um, a lot of times it's going to be something like this. We're going to get a slant and then maybe like a little, little check down to the back, typically what you're going to get, okay? So uh, again, remember your, remember your rules, right? We know we got to man that tight end up, otherwise the coverage just completely breaks, and that's a key, key deal. Even if he doesn't go on a route, it's still a problem. Because what we want to do is communicate to this defender, Jones. We want him to know he has nothing to do with the tight end. Because the game, can that's where they get confused, and that's where problems become. Okay, He has nothing to do with the tight end. Now on the back side, again, just for the purpose of the video, we're just going to... Um, put two purples back here and then I'm not going to worry too much with that slot because I'm going to come back to that in a second. Okay. So you get a concept that looks like this and what you'll see, watch this outside quarter. This is a hidden gem of this defense. Look at it. Look at it. Just take that route all the way across the formation and it actually bags. It actually stops it. Huge, 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 huge for this defense. One of the main reasons why this defense is so good against a formation like this. Okay. So that's that concept. And then the last play, um, so again, we got majority of a two-by-two two compression handled in general. Now, the last step of this is the running back, um, not the running back, but the, I mean, yes, the running back, but the, the four verticals, okay? That's the big key one. And the problem with four verticals is you, it's not as simple as just manning up these outside guys. I wish it was, because if it was, it would make it a lot easier. But um, what you'll see here is you got a wheel from the tight end and you got a wheel from Miller. Oftentimes the running backs on a streak or an angle. You know, I just want you to watch how the, how the coverage plays. Again, we're not doing anything with this nickel corner. I'm just spying. And I'm not doing anything with the three rec. Um, I just want you to see how this, this core concept plays. Okay. Um, and we'll just snap the ball here, and what you'll see is that you get a decent, you, you, it plays okay, okay? So now let's talk about um, the big issue with this, which is the low ball wheel to the left, um, which is the number one 
way you get beat in this in this defense. So if we go to replay, remember we have the tight end manned up. Okay, remember we have the tight end manned up. So the tight end is not. Yes, if you force it, maybe, but I mean it's not like it's and they have to throw it like right here. You kind of live with that, honestly. I mean, you could put the if if they're spamming this, put this guy in a vert hook. But if they're not spamming it and they're just throwing it, you know, every now and then, to me, there's a definitely a chance they could make a mistake. Okay. So I would chill on this. Or I wouldn't like kill myself to try to guard this any better than it is unless they're spamming the play and hitting that route over and over again. Let's come over here. So again, they're gonna throw this right here. Honestly, it's not terrible. But the big problem is that right there. And, I mean, again, it's similar to the tight end. Honestly, it's really not bad. Um, you don't have to kill yourself to defend this either. I mean, you're really not in a bad a bad spot. And then, again, you have this guy. If you take a look here, you're going to notice. Now, I'm going to come back to the running back in just a second, but you're going to notice that this play is pretty decent because he's coming over the top to help. So, I mean, the window to hit that one, honestly, is really not there either. Um, but again, if you play a really good player, they're gonna they're gonna try to hit hit him. So which begs the question: Who do you use or well? This is a key key tip uh, within this because I I you can adjust this as you want, but you basically have um, one defender that you can really do whatever you want with based off of tendency. Okay, because again, we discovered that the major the major route they're gonna hit you with in this in this if you just kind of run it as as match right you should get this like deep post deep cross or whatever you want to call it um to this side it, it's probably the best route that they have okay um so again here if i double team and i want you to watch how the defense plays it this crosser especially if they have a route ability is decently open okay so but the big challenge here, too, is if I were to go to the play. So let's say that I take this nickel corner and I man him up on squared. Now it's going to communicate something to the defense, right? It tells everyone on the defense that he has the square receiver. So if we go to flood and we try to hit this, you should see that it now becomes a man coverage battle. Battle and you get rubbed out, and this could be an easy, I mean, it's it's a bang-bang play, but, I mean, it's a lot more open when you run that defense than when you run the other one that I was talking about earlier, okay? So I don't really want to live that way. I'd rather just use the crosser. Like, I'd rather just say, okay, you know, that crosser can get open, especially if they have a route running ability. I'll just kind of shadow it, and it kind of, again, because we want to make everything funnel to our user ideally anyways. So I'm not too, too worried about that. The thing that I'm worried about with this coverage, um, the thing that I'm worried about with this coverage is the running back uh, and the wheel to the left, okay? So how can we combat both of them? Well, glad you asked. All we're gonna do is we're going to shade our coverage over the top. What that's gonna do is it's gonna put those two players in curl flat zones. You still are likely to get some kind of a jam if they send um, that slot on a vertical, oftentimes you get a press, okay? Oftentimes, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to blitz our user, of course. And then really, really important, what I like to do is we're going to put the linebacker on the left side of the screen into a vertical hook, and we're going to put the defensive end on the left side of the screen or on the running back side into a bluff blitz. Now, he's going to basically guard the running back. Wherever the running back goes, he's going to basically be in man coverage on him. So, and then, of course, like I said, man the tight end up. So you've got this right here. Now, if you're in mutt and you have a one step ahead on that slot or on, on that um, outside corner that's guarding the slot, you might consider manning him up. Okay? You might consider manning him up. But what you'll see now is against that four verticals that was giving us a little bit of trouble, if I try to throw this wheel route, that's a real hard throw. And if you want to, here's another thing, real quick. Um, this is a little bit of another adjustment that you can do instead of shading over top if you don't want to do that. 
purple both of your linebackers, bluff blitz the defensive end, and then vert hook the slot. Why would you do that? It's going to get that slot out there a little bit more. You might even in this situation consider a baseline look. And the reason why I'm suggesting a baseline look is because, again, it makes these wheel routes harder to hit. And what you should see here is if you watch this vertical hook, that's a, I mean, that's a tight window. And, and you're going to get that a lot. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's an iffy, iffy throw. Okay? So that's something you might consider. Um, and then again, like I said, you still have your two curl flat zones, which are going to be very good and very helpful. The vertical hook on the left side is significantly going to help you defend, again, the wheels and any curls, backside curls, stuff like that that they're going to try to eat you up with with this. And then you have the man coverage there. So to me, this is the best way to defend uh, tight. And then again, the beauty of this is, like I said, if they run flood, you've got great matching principles. The swap offs are there. You're going to be in a decent spot. Obviously, you're going to use or you're going to be carrying that anyways because there's nothing else underneath that you got to worry about. Because, and that's yet, yet another reason why this vertical hook is very helpful because now in the middle of the field, you don't have anything to do over here. Your primary window is to guard over here, which is what we want, right? So even in four verticals, even in four verticals, the snap, the ball snapped, and you're here, you can easily go here and then get over here like this and then kind of work back in here, and it makes it more, it just makes it tougher, okay? So this is my favorite defense. Now, I want to caveat everything that I just said with a key, key takeaway in a scenario that you might find yourself in, which is what do we do if they motion, okay? What do we do if they motion? So the first motion that I want to go over is them motioning Scotty Miller. Whoops, not Scotty Miller. Um, them motioning Scotty Miller to the right. And what that basically does is flip everything that I just told you, which is fine. Because um, honestly, we haven't really, if you think about it, we really haven't adjusted this that much in terms of what we can get out of if they motion. Okay, so if they motion Scotty Miller to the right, I want you to watch what happens here. You're going to get now a box check to the right. So what do we want to do with that safety there? We want to we want to get him um, into a inside quarter because we know now we're getting a box check over here, and then this is basically bunch at this point. It, in the way that it's going to defend, this is basically bunch, and you really don't you, you you're not really that bad, honestly. Um, what you might consider doing. Um, is is taking a man alignment approach. So like you get the motion, you go ahead and man align so that that slot corner will follow him and now you can man up the circle receiver. And now we're defending this basically, literally exactly like, you know, we're playing bunch. And you see here that, you know, any kind of corner route's not gonna be there. That deep posted triangle, you got matched and you're carrying and you can make it difficult. So if they motion either of the receivers to the left, I would, I would tell you, um, you know, and again, you can even, I mean, because cause they get you here. And, and I don't see a lot of motion when I place tight. But if they do this, just man align it. And what you should see is you get the traveling. Um, you might not want to man align it like that. Maybe you just, honestly, just flip the play. Probably easiest just to flip the play. So if they motion, just flip the play because that guy will move with you. And now you're defending, you're, you're literally defending it exactly, exactly like you would defend Gun Bunch. Um, and my recommendation would be this defense right here, okay? So let me show you one last time. We'll flip back. You've gone through, you've set up your whole defense, of course. They motion this guy, you flip, and then just quickly purple those guys, and then if you have a chance, man that guy up on the slot. And this is really good defense for for this, this formation. As you see, you get that box check so that deep corner doesn't kill you. Um, obviously did right there, but my guy didn't react when I when I when I tried to catch the ball. So you've got you've got great leverage. You're, you're playing fine. You're in a good spot. Okay. Um, and then lastly, let's let's go over. Uh, lastly, let's go over if they motion if they if they do a motion, which is honestly rather rare from this. Um, but let's talk about if they try to get the rule of four, which is quads. Uh, so again, you set this defense up like this. I don't even know if they can motion. Yeah, they, they can, okay. So they can motion these guys to the left. And you'll probably see this. This is a great little trick um, to cancel match. If they wanna try to run flood, this is a great way to do it. 
And you'll basically do something like this. They double team this guy and they can roll out. And now you see that your match coverage is playing like cover, uh, basically a little bit better version of a cover four drop coverage. And it's not good, as you can see. So what do we do? Well, if they motion, we basically get out of match coverage. Now, it's not actually as hard as you might think. Remember, we've set the defense up that looks just like this. So we've already got man coverage on the tight end, by the way. But what I would do is if they go with a motion like this, my recommendation, you audible to Mike Blitz zero, purple both of your linebackers, and then bluff blitz the D end on the running back side. That's literally all I would do. Um, and, and why this is helpful is because now you're in a true man coverage. Now you're in a true man coverage, and four receivers on one side of the field is not always a good strategy for beating man. It's very limited in terms of the fact that you can't run double crossers. It's, there's a lot of benefit to that. So I would just check. Um, I would just check into straight man against quads um, with the two purples. The two purples are very helpful. Another little thing that you could do, um, let me see if I can show you an example. So I'm going to move the ball over here so I have a little bit more space on that side and show you if they're trying to flood you, uh, which is a good idea of quads. So let's say they're trying to set up a flood where they go streak to Mike Evans. They're going to go with a slant uh, to Miller and then maybe like a post concept or something you know, like this. A great concept okay, um, from a quads look. What I would recommend, because this is how the defense will look, okay, if they're if if they motion, I just want to show this real quick. Again, you audible to Mike Blitz three. I would I would go ahead and shade over top. Why? Because it's way too easy uh, for your players to run into each other in this coverage. But you see here, not nothing's open. Nothing's open. So that's an easy solution. Okay. Uh, but that's how I would defend gun tight. I know I've talked a long time, uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I feel like it's very informative. Hopefully you think so as well. Um, but this is a little bit of a strategy um, in terms of how you can defend gun tight. One of the hidden routes that most people would use in gun tight is a, a little running back in route. It's kind of the main, honestly, especially from uh, the formation that Mills has made famous this year. I'm pretty sure that's just the gun tight uh, offset out of the, uh, I think, the Saints playbook has a pretty nice little running back in route that is very effective. Defending running back in routes, the two purples with the three rack are very helpful. Obviously you could be down in that area as well, but in this scenario, that vertical hook really does help with that running back in route. So if you wanted to, you could put that vertical hook um, there and then now you've got a nice spot for the seam wheel for all of that stuff. So anyways, that's my advice. If I was defending gun tight, this is exactly how I would do it. Um, or at least th to start doing it. If you want to learn more stuff like this, this is a little bit, um, kind of a little bit of a peek behind the curtain as to the depth in which we put these eBooks together for you guys. And so if you want to get access to all of my Madden 22 eBooks, and the cool part is we also show the D, especially defense this year, we show how to defend not just a single setup for a formation. We walk you through an actual scheme built for defending bunch, an actual scheme built for defending tight, an actual scheme built for defending trips, U trips, spread, a slot, under center. We try to walk you through how your defense is going to adapt from all of the major formations you're going to be facing. So if you want to learn how to do that stuff, join our Patreon. I think it's a great deal. It's only $10 a month. Get you access to everything, all the ebooks, all the updates, as well as any new ebooks and new updates that will release while your membership is active. So thanks for watching. If you want to get all that stuff, there's a link in the description where you can sign up for the Patreon membership for just $10. Get you access to everything uh, over at the, at the uh, membership.